You're listening to the Coop Homeschool Podcast. This is your podcast for community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling. I'm Mandy. I'm Jessica. And this is The The Coop. Coop. Today, we're planning... We're planning our school year for the 22-23 year. It's our favorite thing. It is. I like it better than homeschooling. (laughs) Maybe so. I know. It's so fun. Yeah, because you're amazing when you're planning. (laughs) I know. It's like, wow, I I have all these wonderful things. Look how how awesome I am. I know. (laughs) Yep. But we'll talk about, you know, our plans and then maybe some reality is in there. Yeah. Before we do that, Mandy... How's your summer been? Yeah, so we went to Yosemite, hence I'm wearing the shirt and the hat that I got as souvenirs. So cute. I had to buy them twice because one of my kids got a skinned knee and I left $80 of souvenirs in a bag in the parking lot where she got her skinned knee as I carried her to the car. Oh. So yeah, so I bought them twice, but totally worth it. Aren't they adorable? So adorable. Yeah. So, but what was tragic. I know. What was really cool about Yosemite was, um... I did a Yosemite Academy first right. uh, to lead in a couple weeks before we left. And I set up our big camping tent and we did it inside the tent. We did, we put together a first aid kit. We studied like leave no trace and so cool. bear boxes, how to act mm-hmm. if you see a bear. Um, we made lanyards with our phone numbers and names on it in case we got separated. We practiced right. walkie talkies. You know, we, we, we did so many fun things to prepare for the trip. So when we got there, I didn't have to teach all that. Right. You're not scrambling, trying to figure out what they don't know. and yeah. yeah. And then probably our favorite thing we did in Yosemite was we did a naturalist hike. It was a sunset hike for two hours led by a naturalist. It was just our group. So cool. And I, we learned how to observe. We learned how moss changes when it gets wet. We could see it change. And it was in the meadow yeah. with the uh, Yosemite Falls behind us. So it was just beautiful. And seriously... All the kids loved it. All five kids that we were with loved it. And so I think that's what I'm going to try and sign up for in the future when we go to national yeah, parks. Yeah, now you know. See if they have like some ranger-led hike or naturalist-led yeah. hike. Yeah, I've been on some ranger hikes and they've been less than oh, thrilling. Okay. So I'm curious why what separated it as being done well, by a naturalist versus yeah. a park ranger. And I'm wondering if for her, she was in her mid-20s. Mm. Uh, cute. She said she had applied to the education department. And so the, the second it started, she sat down with the kids with the map of Yosemite to and laid it all out of what so all the areas. she may be special. She might just be the special one. And, yeah. she, and the kids loved listening to her and, you know, just really cute personality. And it was, so that was probably the best thing we did. They got to swim in uh, glacier water, basically, yeah. for a few hours. That's so cool. Yeah, it was really great. And then, of course, I got COVID, and it cycled through the family. So that's been the last couple of weeks. Yep. So So there went VBS. There went golf camp. There went uh, our yearbook party had to be uh, postponed. So we, you know, we've we've had some uh, bumps in the road. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically it. Came back from COVID. Yeah. 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 And the the homeschool conference. Yes. We went to that, too. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. All right. My summer has... Not really felt like summer yet. I was telling somebody, people ask, how's your summer break? And I almost feel triggered by that (laughs) because it's not a break. Um, I think some certain educators, we do a lot in the summer that's different than our normal schedule. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't feel like a break. Right. I'm not homeschooling intensely. Right. But um, I picked up a lot more work with two recitals for Mm -hmm. one for each of my studios and they were entire weekends. Yeah. And it was exhausting, but amazing. And then at one of them, I was named teacher of the year. I know. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Thank you. That was really um, unexpected, but really cool. I do Mm -hmm. invest a lot. So it's nice to see that. Affirmation. Yeah. 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 That it's confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. That it's being recognized and valued. Mm -hmm. And so I do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I have two weeks of dance camps coming up for four to seven year olds. Fun. No big deal. Yeah. And I heard they're both maxed out at 15 kids each. Oh my word. Yeah. And so that'll be really fun. Uh, One week is going to be STEM stars is what we're calling it. So we'll incorporate STEM subjects with dance and movement. Mm -hmm. And then the next week is storytellers, Mm -hmm. which will be really fun. Yeah. And then... A week off, maybe. And then family is coming. Yeah. Like 30 members of our family are coming here all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then 
we have camping with yeah, you. Yeah. It's, it's really like our favorite weekend of the summer. It's really a neat tradition. We've been yeah. doing it. This is like our fourth year. It'll now. be our fourth, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Those traditions are really great because the kids can count on them. Uh-huh. Uh, it just it gives them some stability in knowing that, at least for us, one camping weekend is for sure going to happen. Yes, exactly. So we're looking forward to that. I'm getting a new tent and have to test it out. Yeah. And then um, I've been planning a big one-week road trip for my family. Mm -hmm. We decided not to do anything epic in three weeks this time because it was a lot and expensive. And it's hard to drive anywhere that far right now with how much gas costs. But we're going to do just a one-week loop. We're going to go to Big Sur, Monterey Bay, and then over to Sequoia Kings Canyon and then home. Cool. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. I'm super excited to encourage our school room and get oh, it all set up for next that's year. That's your other summer thing. Yeah. I, I love doing that every summer. Yeah. I just do it when I get the whim. So yeah. I have no schedule. Because summer, I can't rely on being able to get anything done. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. You ready to jump in? Yeah. Okay. So I think one of our favorite things about homeschooling is the planning. Mm-hmm. And it's so true because there's so much out there and you want to feel like you're offering your kids just everything that's possible and so the planning is what makes it happen so if you don't plan it then how are you grabbing at anything Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so we each want to share our top three things that we're excited about for a homeschool year Mm -hmm. and then um we're adding new things to our repertoire and so we thought we'd share that for this episode but if you're interested in the other ways that we've planned we have talked about them um through curriculum and content and that kind of thing in episodes 11 and 44. yeah there's a lot of things that we're continuing that we don't really need to talk yeah about you don't need episode. to know the math yeah. that we're still doing <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway mandy what's your first thing okay so that was me clapping yep. <laughs> um Every year, starting three years ago, we do a theme. Uh And the theme, uh, the reason we do a theme is because we want to hone in on some principles for life. Yes. And while we teach that organically and normally in regular life, there are certain ones that we really want to have it be a focus. And it usually um, captures the, the content we're also teaching. So last year was... I am fearfully and wonderfully made yes. and because we were doing the body. And then the year before that, we were studying musicals, so we did make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And then the year before that, I knew my kids had a hard time facing hard things. So it was, I can do hard things. Right. And so sometimes it's a mantra, sometimes it's a verse. So this year, yes, we are doing all creation declares his glory. Oh, cute. Yes. It's based on Psalm 19. And um, basically, it's... We want to teach the story of his glory. And because we're doing history as a focus and we're doing like um, ancient history, ancient art, uh, the Bible history during that Mm -hmm. time as well. We're doing um, uh, ancient science. So how science was discovered. I think the textbook starts it in uh, 600 BC. Okay. So when we get to 600 BC, we'll pick up with the science textbook. That's cool. And and start learning the discoveries at that at that point in time. Um, it's all supposed to tell the story of His glory and and how the creation sings yeah. of His glory. And so I'm really excited to do that. And so to kick it off, this is what I'm super excited about: is the first seven days of school we're going to do by Brighter Day Press. All creation sings. Yeah. Hence. You know, it kind of goes right. with the theme, right? All creation sings. It's seven days of creation unit study. And what's really cool about this is that it's seven days and it's each day of creation. Right. And so we'll be doing like, for example, on day one is let there be light. Mm-hmm. So there's simple light experiments and she has a link and there's some YouTubes to watch and your own light experiments you get to do. And then there's a, a The Light Leanings by R.C. Sprawl picture book. And then there's Shadow Puppets. And then there's Frozen Banana Bites that the kids will make <laughs> that are half white from the banana right. and half dark from the chocolate that they dip uh, it in. Yes, cute. Um, other days we'll be doing Rainstorm in a Jar. We'll be doing Water and Sky Jello. We'll be making a mini terrarium. We'll be uh, making a homemade bird feeder, doing constellation paintings, um, homemade Play Doh. And each one, each day has a, a Christian picture book to go with it. Fun. And then it has like a matching snack. So on the days of birds and fish, it's fish in the sea snack. And it's like goldfish with a blue dyed either hummus or cream cheese oh, on fun. a cracker. Nice. 
So, uh, so it's just fun things to go with it. And then on the day of rest, um, she says, go out for ice cream or a favorite dessert because you get to rest. You know? Right. And, um, and there's a hymn that goes with each day that you sing. So on the day of rest, it's Jesus, I am resting, resting. So it makes sense, right? Yeah. And so I, I thought, what a great way to kick off the year. That's really cool. And teach our theme that all creation is singing of his glory, declares his glory. I love that. Yeah. So, oh, and then I got these creation cards by Brighter Day Press. Um, and they are, yeah. uh, they're, they're really pretty. Yeah. And then the back has the, the discussion questions, the Bible verses to read. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, even if I wanted to review it or kick off the, the, the teaching with it. And then I thought I'd hang them up as we go along. Cute. So yeah, uh, that is number one thing I'm excited about. How about nice. you? Okay. So I've been planning this one in my head since last school year uh -huh. and then formally on paper since probably March or April because we had to start um, thinking about the next school year uh -huh. in terms of our charter school and so I was trying to think ahead of what I was going to be needing and using and giving back and all that stuff so it's been a while in process but mm -hmm. we're doing a big American history unit yeah and I'm creating it which is a little scary um, I feel confident because the California unit study that we did went off really well, uh -huh. but I did have more guidance. Mm -hmm. I just expanded a unit study that I bought mm -hmm. and added to it. Yeah. But this, I don't have a one curriculum that I'm expanding off of. I'm kind of just plugging in a bunch of things, so I'm a little nervous, mm -hmm. but I love it. So uh, Gather Round does an annual sale every June, and so I finished getting all of the units I didn't have. For America or for U.S. history, so there's U.S. history one through six now. Wow! Mm -hmm. So that takes you all the way from the beginnings up to the French and Indian Wars, the first one, and then history six is 1976 to current. Mm -hmm. So usually you don't get that far current in most curriculums that yeah. are out there. They mm -hmm. kind of stop somewhere after World War Two ish. Yeah. So it, I, I like that I have this jumping yeah, out. Yeah, really cool. But where we're really going to start, and I love that Gather Round has this, is they have um, North America. So we're going to start in a content continent study and kind of zoom in as we go. So we're going to start with the big continent and indigenous peoples. Uh, we're going to throw in North American birds in there. So it's not all uniquely history. Which I heard are people's favorite unit study. Oh, I love that. Is, is the North yeah. American birds. Okay, awesome. I'm yeah. excited about that. So on the, on the boards on Facebook. Yeah. Like hands down the one they oh, bring funny. up the most. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to kind of using Gather Round as my jumping off point. And she mm -hmm. always recommends a lot of things to read and um, supplements, but I haven't gone through that yet. So I'm still in the process of planning all of this, but I have a lot here. And if you want to know more about Gather Round, it's in our bonus episodes. Yeah. It's one of our faves. We both yeah. love Gather Round. It's a, it's a, it's a girl um, who yeah. writes this or, and, and the illustrations are beautiful. Exactly. Um, so I found out about History Unboxed, I think just through the internet somewhere. Mm -hmm. and it's, Through the internet. Through the internet. <laughs> I was web searching. The net. Yes. And um, it's very similar to a subscription box, but it's very specific. Mm -hmm. And so it will take you, if you want to do American history, I think there's 12 boxes to go through. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, or you could do ancient history and it has 12 yeah. boxes. I know. I'm too late for that. I, I already have my stuff. Or you can a la carte. Okay. So I already bought, I already got a few of them because they have a welcome box that includes a timeline, which I was super excited about. I love about. that. And then it goes through indigenous uh, peoples and then explorers. It goes through all the th stuff. So now mm -hmm. I just have to pair which box goes where. I might not do every single box, but just the idea that they're there for mm -hmm. when I want to expand on something. That's cool. And then I love the Four Kids History Book series. Um, I used one for California History for Kids, and it was really great, the different way that they would approach things. And so this may actually be a little bit more my driving curriculum, mm -hmm. and then we'll expand and branch out from there. Mm -hmm. um, and they break it down through very specific time periods. So there's the American Revolution, Civil War, World War I, World War II, Civil Rights, Heading West, um, Industrial Revolution, and Great Depression. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I still have a few more of those to get, but I have several already ready. Then Jim Weiss mm -hmm. 
the narrator we love so much. Yes. He does a whole America series as well. Mm -hmm. So I purchased all of his narrations. Uh, it goes through George Washington and all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to have those to listen to since we love him so much. Totally. And Story of the World, while we love that program, mm -hmm. its blip on America is mm -hmm. just very small. So right. it's definitely a big zoomed out lens on world history. So, yeah. um, And then there's other books. I bought one that is for me to listen to. It was It's called American History for Homeschools. Yeah. Yeah. And it was written by a bunch of historians. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, so it's cool. a really neat one. So I plan to listen to it soon to kind of guide me and figure out what sources I want to mm -hmm. use on a lot of yeah. things. And then games, of course. So I've been really scoping out different games. When we were at the conference, oh, I yeah. took the class by the um, classical historian, mm -hmm. and he suggested these history cards. So mm -hmm. they're basically fact cards, and you can use them to play a couple oh, of yeah, different games. Oh, yeah, I got games. the ancient history ones. Yes. Yeah. So it's just about familiarity, mm -hmm. and then you can play them just as basic trivia around the table, mm -hmm. or you could play them as matching games. And so mm -hmm. that's a great way to introduce August to that kind of thing, because he can match it even though he okay. doesn't know what it says yet yeah. or whatever it is. And then we're just repeating the events. Mm -hmm. And so it's just that repetition that I think will be really good. And then field trips. Gotta awesome. love field oh, trips. Yeah. So I have you did three, a great job yeah. with that. You had at least six that we participated in uh -huh. for... Amer uh, for um, California. California history. Yeah. 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 That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm only doing three for American history, but they're okay. actually big ones. Yeah. And so I'm really excited about those. And then there's the literature. So haven't even done that, added that in here. Yeah, but then yeah. there's the actual literature, like The Witch of Black bird pond huckleberry finn oh, yeah. johnny tremaine all these great i don't think books. you can do any anything else this year nope. i think you should just do it's this just history yeah but it's neat because there will be science mixed in and we'll continue on with our math as we go oh, yeah, but this will yeah. be huge with language oh, yeah. arts. she'll be writing about yeah. it yeah and it's gonna with having a unit that. study it does mm -hmm. it works in the poetry and... absolutely yeah Oh, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that, just being the nerd that I am. And mm -hmm. I'm even listening to a historical fiction right now, of course, in my yeah, favorite of genre yeah. of uh, World War II. Yeah. Oh. So it's it's actually, I'm really loving it. Yeah. I'm like obsessed with listening to it. So I'm excited to jump into this because it's one of my favorite Yeah. There's so many do. World War II <sighs> historical fiction, like All the Light um, We Cannot See. Yeah. And there's so many things like that. And then real books as well. And right. It, so you could do a whole year just sure. on World War II literature. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. So I'm excited. I, this is me. This is the catalyst for what's coming forward, mm -hmm. you know, because we'll move to the ancients in the next year mm -hmm. and then kind of go through world history in mm -hmm. two years. Okay. And then by eighth grade, we'll jump into more government, okay. economics, and then the big wars. Yeah. And so we'll actually focus on the wars as whole. And Frank and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yep. And so that'll be eighth grade, which yeah. is the perfect time perfect. to do all those. Yeah. So I'm so excited, but of course, as you know, planning is one thing, and then execution is another. Yeah, uh, my daughter, who's ten, really wanted to read uh, the Diary of Anne Frank, right. and I looked it up, and she is like thirteen or mm -hmm. fourteen. So it's like, yeah. why don't you just wait till you're her age? Right. I think she goes from twelve to fourteen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, have you heard of Liberty Kids? Yes. The show? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's I know. Time. I haven't even gone to the shows yet. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's later. It's always nice when there's a show. Yeah. Like, well, something you can Prager stick you, on. Prager U has a lot of history for kids and right. then his, oh, like five U. minute episodes for adults. Okay. And so I didn't I'm going to pair did. those in there. Yeah. Okay. We'll I didn't talk know about they, that later. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. My, okay, what's next? My <laughs> second thing that I'm excited about for this year is art school. Yes. So I, I'm going to tell you my why. So I grew up. <laughs> my why. I grew up going, I don't want to call it art school, but it was an art class at yeah. like an art school um, once a week for years. Mm -hmm. And I'm not good at art, but I have an appreciation for it. So just like in dancing, like, right. when, okay, when I took the ballet class, for example, yes. and when, as an adult, and I saw how hard it was to lift up my leg behind me, now I have an appreciation right. when I watch people, especially yeah. the older kids and the adults, lift up their legs straight and behind them and then hold <laughs> it. I'm like, mine only goes like a foot off the floor. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> what? what? Um, it's my gluteus maximus. Right. It's, <laughs> it's done. It's maximized. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so then I have a better appreciation, right? Well, every everything is that way, right? Everything. So. Yeah. 
You so, don't know until you know. Yeah. So the art, art is that way. So I want, I want my kids to have an appreciation. Mm -hmm. And by using different materials, different, uh, learning different lessons about art, they'll develop an appreciation. And I love traveling in so many places you travel to. It's about the architecture. It's about yeah. the, the museums. That's it's what a, makes it unique. Yeah. yeah. And it's about certain art pieces they have, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then there's the beauty and the art of like Yosemite. And so mm -hmm. I want my kids to be able to connect to all that yeah. throughout their life. So, so we're doing art school. Love it. And uh, so I bought them. I, it's already come in. I've already set it up. The tool is their art box. Okay. So I'm, I'm linking everything here too. Okay. Um, and it's for high quality art supplies. So I had one growing up from like sixth grade on mm -hmm. and I didn't get rid of it, which I wish I hadn't until I was getting married and moving out of my parents' house. And I saw it there and it, I had my own like stuff in it still and I could have used it. Right. And I'm so bummed I got rid of it. But that's what I want to develop for them. I want to develop high quality toolbox of art supplies that they will use for these art lessons. So that's the tool. The curriculum. So I have three different things that I'm doing. The first one is artistic pursuits. So I discovered them last year at the homeschool conference mm -hmm. and I bought the book, the first book, which is, um, just the foundation. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's art for children, building a visual vocabulary and it's volume one and it comes with the oh, nice. CD lessons. And then each lesson, um, talks a little bit about it and, um, about the, the experience they're going to have. And then the the art that they're actually going to do neat. and then um they say which supplies you need to buy ahead of time and they take pictures of all the brands and stuff so you know what to buy i'm going to be doing that this summer so i have a, another month to go or two then when we start oh, yes. ancient history i'm going to be doing artistic pursuits volume two art of the ancients and they go on they have like the middle ages italian renaissance art of northern countries, uh, Renaissance to realism and so on. There's eight volumes for elementary school. And then they have, um, for lower elementary, then they right? Upper elementary, right. middle school and high school. So I don't know how long I'm going to continue it, but I definitely want them to develop skills. And then I want to do ancient art. So they're doing like hieroglyphics. They're doing, right. um, clay molds. They're, they're doing all that. So I'm really excited that it's on a, a seat, a DVD yes. that they can watch and it can teach them. And then I can do it with them. Right. So, uh, that's part of it. Then we're going to do a field trip to Getty Villa mm -hmm. Museum. So there's the Getty Museum and then there's the Getty Villa. Okay. And the Getty Villa is like a large, um, uh, recreated Roman country home. And inside are Greek and Roman antiquities. So I went there in high school mm -hmm. and I still remember it. I went with my English class. Nice. And they have pre-visit activities and they have self-guided activities, print and go activities for various age groups. Mm -hmm. Um, the activities that you're supposed to do there include like dancing it out, poetry, oh, wow. writing, drawing, blind, and more. They even oh, have wow. activities that create your own gallery lesson. So they have so much there That's for really this Getty cool. Villa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm super excited to do that. I was, uh, thinking about doing it as a, as a possible field trip. And then I thought that's just too much because I have a focus of right. what I want my kids to do there and what I want them to Not enjoy there. with their friends. Yeah. Right. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to do an artist week. So, so the first two are, are focused on the ancient mm -hmm. history because ancient art, because we're doing ancient history and they're going to see, um, uh, how man-made art declares God's glory, sure. you know, because God is the author of beauty. Right. And so that's going to be a major focus in our art school. But for our artist week, we're going to step out of ancient and we're going to do photography. We're doing Ansel oh, Adams cool. because we went to Yosemite. Yes. We've gone to the arches. He has taken, so he's a photographer from the 1900s, mm -hmm. American West photographer, and it's all black and whites. And he has taken, uh, so many photos. I have a book of 400 of his photos. So we're, and he was an environmentalist as well. Mm -hmm. So every year we do a week of an artist we've done Michelangelo and Claude Monet. So this year, Ansel Adams, it's awesome. uh, the food is going to be like s'mores and hot yeah. dogs because it's, it's so American. Cute. Yeah. Right. Um, I got this ANSI Ansel book, which is, um, they actually had it at the, um, um, Ansel Adams, uh, gallery 
but I, I just bought it online. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, and but I went to the gallery in Yosemite. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it talks about how he became a photographer. Okay. The coolest thing is one of my friends from college is a photography teacher at a high school nearby. And so I asked her, what should I do? I want to do a week of teaching them photography. And so she said, oh, do sun prints, collect and draw items from nature, teach them the Lightroom app, how to make photos black and white, adjusting exposure, teach the difference between HDR and Mm non-HDR, take a nature walk. So I thought we'd go to the Elfin Forest and and take pictures. Um, And then she says, have them make collages in Canva. And then she sent me homeschool photography lesson curriculum. What? 68 pages. That's awesome. I know. So it, it's teaching me too. So it's all these lessons you can take them through. So I might just That's pick really like cool. the best ones to do one a day for the week. Yeah. Um, and then he was invited. Um, Ansel Adams was an environmentalist. Right. So I thought it would be cool to spend some time on talking about the environment. We have the Usborne book on trash mm-hmm. and recycling. We could go pick up trash, take a picture of trash, make uh, art using trash. Right. And, um, so yeah, so that all is part of the art school. And again, with the undercurrent of, uh, God is the author of beauty and, um, we're capturing beauty in ancient art and we're seeing the store, we're seeing how art developed over time. And then we're also looking and my kids love photography. They love taking pictures. So I'm excited to develop that skill for them. That's awesome. So yeah. All right. My next one is. I've got my little guy starting school. Yeah. So I've been getting to, I'm going to use air quotes for this, plan uh, school for yeah. him. Yeah. And I've already been through it. Totes. With Sophia. Um, and he's more TK than kinder. But we have a lot that we haven't pulled out yet, mm-hmm. you know, because he hasn't even really wanted to hold a crayon in his hand up until the last month or two. So Wait, now, you mean a crayon? A crayon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not a crayon. <laughs> crayon. I think he said it the way I did. <laughs> Probably. Not enunciating very well today. Um, so I'm excited to start getting some of those things out. You know, mm-hmm. we have the dry erase um, books that help teach letter shapes and um, or gets them ready for it. Mm-hmm. We have a lot where you just follow the lines and make a curve yeah. and all that stuff. And Sophia used to love the dry erase. Oh, she just mine going, all did that. Yeah. 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 So um, he, I don't even know if he's seen them. I have dinosaur ones oh. and sharks. I have all kinds. Yeah. So um, I'm excited to get those out. And then we used to have some books for Sophia for cutting. So oh, scissor we did too. practice. We had the Kumon and, ones. Okay. We mm-hmm. had, I think, Mine were Melissa and Doug. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it came in a little kit. So I need to get those. And then we have story cubes, which I love. Mm-hmm. And so it's just kind of teaching them how to go through a story from start, middle, and end. And helping him kind of just learn to create and enjoy. And then um, we have math skills. And so if he isn't really ready to learn to form his numbers um i have all the magnetic numbers and so we'll just use like he'll love having a magnet board or with sophia we used to use stampers Uh and so we'd have like the fun frog stamps and we'd add up frogs you know one we'd roll dice yeah and so two and then plus and then we'd roll the dice again do all that stuff my ivy crate that i have oh yeah it's all that kind of stuff nice but with a theme i think we have a chicken Mm. one still so yeah okay um, take a look. Yeah. So I'm just excited to start incorporating him. <sighs> not even incorporating because he's been incorporated, mm-hmm. but now he gets his own unique stuff. It's not just doing it with Sophia. He yeah. gets his own, this is August time and, you know, get to do things. And I don't have a huge plan to sit down and be overly structured with him because it's not my philosophy yeah, of education. Right. But now there's just a lot more thoughtfulness going into what I have on hand for him. Well, and he's going to hopefully just see this spe- he gets extra special time right. with you. That's right. That's now it's his turn. Right. And it grows with him developmentally. Mm-hmm. So as he has new learnings and understandings, then the things and activities we do together will be at that new level, you yeah. know, to encourage new things. So that's really how I see it is just being prepared for those next steps because he's showing a lot of readiness. 
uh-huh. which will be episode 83. Um, so I don't want to give away too much yet, but um, he's just shown a lot of readiness. And so uh-huh. it's just really exciting to see that, oh my gosh, this is why kids typically start school around age five, That's because funny. there's a lot of readiness just in general developmentally. Mm-hmm. I haven't done anything formal with him beyond mm-hmm. just being there singing songs, reading books, mm-hmm. sh- exposing him to things. You know, I'm not sitting there making him memorize his mm-hmm. letters or but, anything like that. But kids love routine. They, they love do. structure. And so he and a- he's naturally curious. to when, yeah. whenever you had those days that you did that. Exactly. Yeah. And so there's just a lot that he's, he's ready for. And mm-hmm. so it's exciting. So there's that. And then I need to just go and explore the things that I don't know. Mm -hmm. So that's part of my planning um, this summer is to just take a look at what new things are out there. Um, I went through a a Jesus Storybook Bible study with Sophia when she was that age. Mm -hmm. And so I have the DVD. And so um, they now have a coloring book too. And there's some other supplementary thing that goes with it. So I was going to go check that out because that's a really good practice for us to get in again and to be doing that every morning. And he starts music classes again and Mm -hmm. all that stuff. So he's going to have his own yeah, it's on trajectory. Yes. Yeah, you should Crazy. take home my with you my homegrown preschooler. Oh yeah, and then the big binder. Yeah, yeah. There's four of them. Oh, yeah. oh not There's so four warm. big binders, yeah. Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> but you should take them all, and right. then you can flip through and just see if there's anything you want to pull from there. Yeah, that's perfect because there's a lot that I hope to just pair with what we're totally. doing with Sophia. That way, he doesn't. I don't want the lessons to truly be separate. Mm-hmm. I want to enhance what he's doing and coordinate it with what Sophia is doing yeah. so that we have this cohesive learning, not this like, okay, time to stop that. We're going to move over right. here. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. So it's kind of fun when, if you're studying, studying like the hard winters and pioneer, right. you could do some winter yeah, crafts exactly. or something. Yeah. That'd be yeah. really fun. The Donner party. We're going to study yeah. that this year. Oh, fun. <laughs> the Oregon Trail. Your daughter is going to love that. I know. <laughs> you know her well. Okay. What's your last one? Okay. My last one, as many of you know, uh, I like to do the dailies. So I'm just going to explain the dailies real quick. They're what my kids love to do the most in our formal Mm -hmm. school days, if you want to call it that. Uh, It's a time of bonding, learning, uh, life principles, delighting in each other's companies. We do Mad Libs, Word of the Day, Gratitude Journal, Question of the Day, Fart Book, Joke Book, Mm -hmm. Scripture Reading, Picture Books, you know. Love it. So those are our, our dailies, right? Well, this year I wanted... I wanted to do more than just that. I've been doing yeah. that for years. Right. And we finished our word of the word of the day book finally. It took us three years to go yeah. through word of the word of the day. And the 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 question of the day will just go on throughout a lifetime. Yeah. It's really meant to last throughout their their educational, youth. yeah. And career. um so um I got this book called Morning Time, mm-hmm. again by Brighter Day Press, who I mentioned earlier that I got the creation study. Yes. And it's 30 six weeks of family discipleship and foundational learning. Oh, neat. So uh, what the, the, the writer or the author, um, I'm going to quote uh, what she has to say about it. She writes, many people believe that the, that the success of a day depends largely on how a person spends his first 30 minutes of the morning. Mm. And that supports my why. Not that it's the first thing we're going to do actually in the morning, but the first thing that we'll do together. Right. And, and that's what the dailies have been. Like, let's start off with a positive attitude, with thankfulness. Right. And so I love that her why is my why. Like, let's start off well. And then she says, this morning time book is designed to ingrain a rhythm into our lives so that long after we no longer practice it, it still speaks to us, instructs us, and guides us in the way we should go. Hmm. In Ephesians 6, 4, Paul tells parents to bring their children up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Our task then as Christian parents is weighty and can often feel overwhelming. I have sought to lighten this load by creating a purposeful gospel-centered plan. So it's set up as three terms, 12 weeks each term, which is a Charlotte Mason way of planning your school year. Yeah. And it, and it, she has set it up to take 30 minutes plus another 30 minutes for a read aloud option. Okay. So the way it goes is there's a Bible devotion reading, prayer, memory verse, hymn, poem, and catechism or two per Mm -hmm. week. And then uh, per term, there's one to two read aloud chapter books. 
like the Green Ember, the Penderwicks, the Wizard of Oz, Little House. And she has multiple options to choose from at yeah. each time. And those are her suggestions? Yeah. I highly recommend the Green Ember. That's I know. That's the one I keep Well, that's about. what I keep wanting Ruby to read. Well, our and book, she keeps our saying book club no. is going to do it. Okay, so. that's perfect. They'll that's all be forced to do it. That's perfect. I think that's term one anyway. So. Yes. Um, okay. Maybe that'll be book one. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've been wanting to do that. And... And it's, it's this rabbit that's yeah. on an adventure, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, and they were at the homeschool conference two years ago and they were, oh, the author? Like, yeah, he was like uh, signing J.D. Smith, whoever it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was signing books and stuff. Yeah. And now read aloud revival. I think she highly recommends his yeah. book and his whole tagline is tagline is rabbits with swords. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> it's dorky, but so cute. And yeah. the book was really powerful and it was a kid's book and I read the entire series in a week. Oh, wow. And, like, it had me crying. Yeah. I, I just, I remember this moment being in the shower because I listened to my audiobooks in the shower and I was just crying in the shower. Yeah, totally. That's how moved I was by this book. And I love so it. it's really well done. It has, um, it's allegorical. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so it has this great moment that is great to talk about. Yeah. Anyway, keep going. Yeah. Sorry. So she has these books that supposedly go along with the themes of the, the terms. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And, and then she always has like two options to choose from so that if you've read one, like my kids have already done all the Pinderwicks. So we right. would pick the other one. They've done the little house. So they would pick the other one. Right. Um, there's also a, a per term, so per 12 week term, there's a missionary study, mm -hmm. composer study, and an Ooh. artist study focus for those 12 weeks. So really for example, cool. first term is David Livingstone, which mm -hmm. is the missionary, mm -hmm. Bach, and Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. Second term is Jim Elliott, Beethoven, and Rembrandt. And third term is Corey Tinboon, Stravinsky, and Claude Monet. And then Ooh, she I has like, like kids books to go with it, picture books, and potential chapter books, depending on the age the of levels. your child. Yeah. yeah. And then she includes Spotify playlists for the composers. She has the hymns printed. She has the poetry printed. And she has the works of arts printed beautifully. That's right. So I'm so glad I ordered it printed yeah. because I... You would never print that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to print this Rembrandt, Rembrandt self-portrait. <laughs> it's like really dark. That would use up yeah. all my ink. Totally. So, um, okay. so yeah, I'm excited to have this. I might have to do that. You should. It seems like, yeah, it's Doesn't really it seem cool. amazing? So sure you should I, take a yeah. look at it before you leave and see if you want to do I it. I will. Yes, you okay. should. Um, so I'm excited to do that. I'm excited to have structure to my dailies. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. It's just, we're all growing up, man. I know. <laughs> Everything's changing. I, I used to say no curriculum, and now I'm like, oh, I'm Even so Even my excited. dailies are going to be my <laughs> But it's true. Like, I mean, we just, so we don't have forever with them. We I have know. these small periods of time and you did your less structured while they were younger. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we did Mad Libs oh. every day and they giggled their heads off. Right. But they've been through multiple Mad Lib books now. Like we right. can move on. Yeah. We can do other things. Okay. So my last one, I'm cheating a little bit because I wanted to pull in our co-op. Yeah. Totes. I'm doing a ton of planning for our yeah. co-op uh -huh. and I don't know when we'll do another co-op episode yeah. exclusively. So I thought for any of you out there who are planning a co-op or wanting to, uh -huh. I would just share this because it's a huge part of my annual planning. Oh, definitely. And yeah. I learned my lesson last year in planning field trips because I'd never really tried to do mm -hmm. these big field trips that a lot of the public schools are doing, and I had not realized that they book them over a year in advance. Incredible. And so us homeschoolers, if we don't know that and aren't mm -hmm. doing that, we don't get to go. Yeah. So um, I really worked hard at the end of the school year um, to start working on the field trips I was prioritizing. And mm -hmm. so as I mentioned, when I was talking about American history, I have three. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing, um, I have them right here. So I'm not guessing for you. We're doing the Fort Cross and uh -huh. Julian. And so they do a colonial living history day. And so we can all dress up if we want to as colonists. And we go and we'll candle dip and do all kinds of things. And That's then so cool. they help us walk through a war also. I think, I don't know. I don't know, you know which what? war it is. We should totally. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't, you, haven't, you haven't taught it yet. You don't, right. We learn it's a with battle. our kids. It's a battle in the Revolutionary okay. War. But yeah. we learn with our kids, right? Right. right. Um, we should, whoever's going, we should see who wants to sign up to go and rent. Oh, go to a costume like, shop. Like a mom's, a mom's night. And we go <laughs> and we try on the costumes. And we rent them and to wear to the... That'd be, that be amazing. Fun? That'd be so fun. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have to 
price that out. Yeah, we will. Yeah. <laughs> so I have that already scheduled and ready to go. And then there's we have um, a ship down here in our harbor called the Star of India. It's mm -hmm. a historical ship that has a lot of significance behind it. Um, part of the Maritime Museum down there. And they offer a prelude to the revolution experience. It's and so, so cool. the kids come aboard and they're basically treated like colonists in Boston at the mm -hmm. time of the Boston Tea Party. So it's it's all stirring and they're feeling unfair. And so they're really gonna talk about what taxation looks like and how you get this load from here to there and, and the conflicts that they were facing by not having any say yeah. in what they were doing. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm super Are they gonna excited. get to dump tea over the side? I don't know about that, <laughs> but I think they'll have a lot of I'm fun. Just kidding. And then the final one I'm doing is um, it's a little bit far. It's about a two hour drive from us and it's a civil war reenactment. So it's not just us watching one. It's the kids coming in, having a learning experience with the educational team there, learning about the, each side of the civil war and kind of what they were fighting for or mm -hmm. against. And the kids pick sides and wow. they work to reenact mm -hmm. the war. And so then they'll be guided through how the war went and all the different aspects. And so yeah. fun. So I'm really excited about mm -hmm. those three because they're all so hands on. And we did another fave um, previous to this season about Living History Days. And yeah. I think we got really nerdy and excited about that we too. Did too. Because yeah. They're so exciting. Yeah. In our bonus episodes. Yep. You know, yep. and that's going to check off since I haven't even looked at the state standards. Fifth that, grade is all American history. Yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm going to that'll check off a number of those for yeah. my fifth grader. Yep. And then I figured now that I have my little guy who actually won't be able to go to any of those field trips, oh. probably. Uh he can go to colonial days. Yeah. But the rest he can't even go to because there's age limits now for some of these more intricate ones. Mm -hmm. And the content gets a little heavier. Yeah, and yeah. so I don't think you want a five year old watching the Civil War battle. Yeah, yeah. Eh, we're good. So I want to do field trips that are more geared towards him so I've contacted the police department and the fire department and we'll go there and check it out and I'll see if there's any others that maybe we should be taking our kids to I don't know if I want to take I mean I don't know if they even do tours of hospitals I was thinking something oh, like that but we did really. we did a tour of the back side of a post office oh post office that's the one that yeah. was I mean my kids could care less just right. warning yeah but as an adult yeah. it was fascinating well, like it comes out of the ceiling it's so cool yeah yeah it's my really kids, cool pop pop was a letter carrier oh. and so we have this unique connection in our family to okay. letter carriers and so that'll be a sweet one to yeah. do just for us and we'll invite the whole co-op and well they may see. only because they just took us because oh. it was very we were Intimate. the only ones yeah th oh. there's not a lot of space okay so they might not yeah it might depend on which location too yeah. so i might ask and see because it might that. be fun for the whole co-op yeah, we could it, yeah. Go to a bigger distribution center, mm -hmm. maybe. We did the one in your your town. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, and then this year our co op is doing clubs, mm -hmm. and so I mean not as a mandatory thing, but yeah. we offered this opportunity if parents had a specific unique interest they wanted to pursue for their kids, host a club. Mm -hmm. That's what this co-op should be for is mm -hmm. to find common interests and to allow them to time the time to do it. But our huge group of 14 families, we can't all do all the things all the time. It's totally. too much. So I really wanted to do a book club. So I've been planning out this book club and I still don't have all the details honed in because I don't know who exactly is participating. So that's the point in the planning process I'm at is to put it out there. And mm -hmm. then once I know who's in, mm -hmm. then to finalize the details of how many books are we sticking to one genre? Um, do we let the kids pick from a list mm -hmm. or am I picking mm -hmm. because we don't want any dissension? Yeah. Group. Yeah. So, um, I'm just really excited to go for that. And then, like I said, the green ember is high on that list as a motivation to try and get my daughter to read it, knowing that yours is also not wanting to read mm -hmm. it. It's so funny. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the deal is. I don't I don't see why it would be less appealing to girls necessarily. There's a very strong female character in there. I don't know if it just isn't. I don't know. I can't put mm -hmm. my finger Maybe on what it is. Maybe it's the art on the front. They, kids tend, my kids tend to judge a book by its cover. Totally. Which you should, but I don't I don't dislike the art yeah, on the no, front. It's, no, it's great but and Sophia <laughs> even listened to the first maybe six chapters and huh. then dropped out so anyway. maybe it was just beyond their maturity level I don't think so but yeah. it's 
just something. It didn't <sighs> speak to them. Yeah. Anyway, maybe it's maybe it reminds me of old books. Maybe the writing is oh, yeah, more maybe. old fashioned. Yeah. Could be. But I'm drawn yeah. to that versus yeah, totally. you know mm-hmm. against it. And then of course there's all the admin work that goes into planning our co-op. Oh, here, yeah. So. I got to update the handbook still. Yeah, you have a big chunk have, of that. Yeah. yeah. But I love doing that. That's right. like, if you can find someone like me right. in your co-op that loves policies and procedures. Right. I like having them, and I like being able to talk yeah, through yeah, them. Yeah, And I will type them and do that, but, but I, I get don't excited. Need to. Like, yeah. I made an event yeah. planning checklist. No, I like spreadsheets. Yeah. You need a yeah. spreadsheet, I'm your gal. Totes, yeah. But if it's, yeah, I don't need a, I can't. Yeah, I love I it. I don't want love to pour it. into that. But so that's a huge part of my planning this summer. And it's well worth all of the planning it takes. Um, and I look forward to it every year, trying to think of the new different things. I have a mm-hmm. whole game schooling day that I want to do oh, with our totally, co-op. Yeah. But that's kind of at the lower mm-hmm. end of the list because these other things come first. And I don't want to be overly stressed about yeah, it all. Yeah. But you, you know, can once, even just do one in the spring and there you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's what I've got going on. All right. Well, that sounds awesome. We uh, It's a lot of fun things coming up this year. For sure. All right. Are you ready to move on to our Coop Q&A, Q&A where we answer your questions? Uh, today's question is, how far in advance should I plan? Ooh. Mandy? Well, well, first of all, when you want to, when you feel yes. inspired to, you should sure. do it. Because sometimes you might feel inspired in February to plan next year. Totally. And you might want to mull over it for months and months to come. Uh, but as a general guideline for myself, yeah. I'll give you my little mm-hmm. uh, breakdown. Yes, go for it. So I usually like, if I'm planning with other people, mm-hmm. and we do this with our co-op, you kind of... For me, it works to plan like nine months ahead. So we will get together with our co-op in August yeah. and we'll set the dates for the whole year. Yeah. So yeah, there'll be a date in September, which right. we've already put out there. But for October all the way through May to make sure things with groups of people happen. Right. Same with your field trips, yeah. right? Otherwise, people's calendars fill up and it people want to be spontaneous, but there's really no time and no space to, to be spontaneous. Yeah, it's a great thought. Yeah. And then about six months ahead of time, our major family events, like if I start thinking, oh, I definitely want to go, let's say, to the Getty Villa. Do I want my husband included in that? If so, then I got to find a Saturday or a day he's going to take off. But if not, then I need to figure out. And I want to make sure that important things get on the calendar within like a six-month time period ahead of time just to make sure it happens. I know. It's easy to just... The time just goes. Yeah. And, or even my week study, like when I do Ansel Adams, I want to pick a week that I know we don't have a lot going on. It won't be when we have ski passes because right. I want to make sure we can go skiing whenever right. we you want. want to be spontaneous for that. Yeah. And then about a month ahead of time, I like to plan like the general objectives and books mm-hmm. and categories of our curriculum. Like yeah. I want to gauge where we are and say, okay, I'm hoping we will do one uh, in our unit study, one lesson per week, let's say. I might make that goal. And then it's the week prior that I'm super concrete. So I love on like Friday afternoon when we've finished the week or it's Sunday evening. I love getting into my planner and planning out Monday through Friday because I know exactly what's going to happen. I know what's coming up. I know what lessons are for sure happening. I know for sick and counseling lessons or whatever. And I can lay everything out. And I've learned to do that from trial and error. We've talked many of times of all the different ways I've tried to plan. Right. And it really just, I figured out last year what really is working is just on that Friday, Saturday, or Sunday right. plan just that resetting. next week. Yeah. yeah. Regardless then, of what you didn't get through. Right. You, know, you just start over. Yeah. yeah. And you just keep progressing because I don't like feeling like I'm falling behind and I don't want to rush through things. So if I plan even three weeks ahead, like we're going to do these lessons all you know, on these specific days, if it doesn't happen, where is it going to fall on? Right. And and then you feel that anxiety Instead and that of pressure. Just letting it be. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're still, I mean, it's still essentially the same thing. Yeah. But now you don't feel like you're making up. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to catch up to make, make my life fit my planner. Right. So what yeah. about you? Um, well, I think that your guidelines are really on it. I think that those are all really important. Um, you know, the bigger the event, the more time you need to have there to prioritize it. Mm -hmm. Um, or the more important the event, you know, like our co-op, if we've asked everybody to prioritize it, but we don't give them any dates, that's really not fair to expect people to be able to show up. Mm -hmm. So I agree with all of that. 
um, I think in my personal life because I have work that also is a set schedule all the mm -hmm. time. There are some things that are just overwhelming for me to plan. Mm -hmm. And I think you've encountered that now being my friend for so many years is there's things that I'm really good about going, yes, let's do it. Here's mm -hmm. when. Yeah, donut road trip, done. done. Yeah. yeah. And then there's other things that I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. Like, you know, because if it requires me taking a day off, it has to actually be worth mm -hmm. all of the work. It's not even the sacrifice of missing work. It's mm -hmm. the work it takes me to cover yeah. when I'm gone. It's yeah. incredible the work I put into just being gone for a day yeah. as a yeah. teacher. So um, that kind of thing is hard mm -hmm. um, for me to commit to sometimes. And then um, as far as educational planning, I think that I am like you in the sense of I definitely don't enjoy planning too far ahead. So while I have a whole big idea for mm -hmm. the year, I don't like breaking it down even into months because yeah. I don't know what it's going to hold. Right. Um, I may have the best the best plan, the best intentions, and then even still, we decided to go paddleboarding one mm -hmm. day, and yeah. we missed a whole lesson, and then the next week, I can't make it up because there's no wiggle room, right? you know, and then I'm not about doing a double lesson, right. so then what What do you do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just this catalyst of, of momentum, you know, right. and so um, I really, I, I almost even reverse plan in the mm -hmm. sense of we get through what we get through and then I write down what we did. Mm -hmm. instead and that's of cool to look ahead. back on. I, is, you've mentioned yeah. that before actually and yes. that's what I was expecting you to say yeah. <laughs> is that you, you yes. write down what you did and right. that's pretty cool too. That yeah. would give you feelings of success of what you right. got done and if it's not your curriculum and not the lessons but it's special moments you had or special right. um, activities you did, that's there. And you're right. like, oh, wait, we did do stuff. It's right. just Look we didn't it. get further in our math book. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, what I do think I need to do is do a little bit better of what you're talking about, an end of the week uh, forward look. You hmm. need to look forward because I kept getting stuck in my California history. I'd be all ready to sit down and go, and then suddenly I'd realize I didn't actually look at what we're doing oh, this I know. week. <laughs> <sighs> and then, oh, this was a lot of reading. Yeah. Or it required me to immediately start with an experiment that I don't have I have the stuff for. I know. Or like I haven't even previewed the YouTubes oh. to see if they're worth our time right. that they're linking to. Right. So there's definitely that type of planning I mm -hmm. need to do. Not that I need to get through it all. Right. And not that I need to decide when I'm doing it. But each week, just looking at the next chunk of work that mm -hmm. I know is coming. Yeah. So I do need to get better at that now that I'm doing more intensive stuff with Sophia in particular yeah. is I just need to know the content. So I'm not asking her to sit there while I'm like, oh, um, uh, we can skip that. And yeah. then, that's so disorganized. Nobody yeah. likes that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure she loves you, to hear, you, we don't, we don't have yeah. to do this one. But you but. feel a little less successful. Like if I yeah. start reading through the unit study, that is definitely, this part is meant for high schoolers. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. We're going to pick up right here. It would have been yeah. nice if I had looked at it right. ahead of time. Highlighted. Yeah. Yeah. So I do need to do more of that. So mm -hmm. I do recommend that style of looking ahead in whatever way you like to do that. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for me, I won't be writing down specifics, mm -hmm. but I do want to know what is next. Yeah. And it, it, the I have to say, for example, the Gather Round would recommend yes. certain YouTubes and sometimes I wouldn't preview them. And we'd sp I'd spend, I wouldn't have them ready on my no, screen. Not I'd even spend, ready. I'd spend all this time... Then I finally find it, and it was like 30 seconds of like the paraplegic games. And I'm like, I could have found a better video right. for this one occasion. Like, she had a lot of great oh, sure. videos. Yeah. But every once in a while, I was like, oh. And I made them sit there while I was pulling it up, not even knowing what I was about to show them. Yep. On YouTube. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's, a, that's our advice. And that's it. Thanks for listening. We love your support. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave a rating and review to let us know how we're doing, and share our podcast with your friends who need a little community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling.